If you're a Canva user, then you'll know how tedious it used to be to create a table. All that faffing around, creating cells, and then duplicating them once you had the right size, etc. Well, the great news is Canva recently brought in the tables feature, and it is brilliant. Hi there, I'm Sharon, welcome back to my channel. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create your own weekly social media planner using tables. So let's crack on. So firstly, I'm using a free version of Canva, so everything I show you in this video, you can do for free. And you can follow along using your own free account if you want to. I'm just gonna click create a design in the top right corner here. And I'm gonna look for A4 document, as I want this planner to be a page that I can either print out or use as a PDF. So I click A4 document. So the new tables feature is actually stored in the elements section of the menu on the left hand side. So if you click into elements and then if you scroll down, you will see underneath where it says charts, there is now a new one called tables and you just click see all. And this shows you the different styles of tables that you can have. There are three different types of tables. So you have one, which is just the grid lines. Let me just zoom in a little bit. So the first one is just grid lines. So each cell is separated by a borderline and none of it is filled in. The next one is the same style again, but with a colored header row across the top. And the final one has colored cells with gaps in between each cell that you can see here. Don't worry too much about the pre-formatted styles because I'm gonna show you how to format them a bit later on. So just choose the style that you prefer at the moment click on it and it will put it into the design. So if you click anywhere within the table, you will see three dots appear above the column of the cell that you've clicked into and also to the left of the row of the cell that you've clicked. So if I click into this cell here, you'll see the three dots appear above it and to the left of that row. And if you click actually onto the three dots, it opens up a tool menu for the actual column and rows in the table. So you can copy, paste and delete, but note that you have to use the actual keyboard shortcuts to use the copy and the paste. And the delete, if you click delete, I'll just press delete to show you, it deletes the whole table. So just be aware of that, that if you want to delete an actual row or column, if you click into the three dots, don't press the delete at the very top, click on the delete where it says delete column or in the rows, if you click the three dots there, it will say delete row. So I'm just gonna put some text in. Um, so to put text into a cell, just double click in any cell. And to move across to the next cell, all you would need to do is press the tab key or you can use the arrow keys and they will move across and down, up, etc. So I want to have the days of the week going down this first column, but I've run out of space. So if I actually want to add another row beneath this one where it says Wednesday, I want to add another row, click on the three dots and you can add a row before or after. So I just click after and it gives me a new row and it's formatted the same as the previous row. Another way of quickly adding rows is to use the tab key. So after I've typed in Thursday, I can then tab across to the next cell, the next cell, and if I press the tab key again, it will automatically add another row. And then final way of adding another row is when you click into the table, you can see there's a plus symbol here between each of the cells, each of the rows, and there'll be one at the very end here. If you click into there, it will add a new row below it and it will be formatted exactly the same as the one above it. So as you can see, I've now filled in the days of the week. And it's the same with the columns. If I went under the column adding at the end of this table, I click on the three dots and I want to add a column after, which will add it to the right. Click three dots again, add a column before, which will add a column to the left of the column that you're selected. So a quick way of adding columns, if you hover your mouse over between the um, cells at the top of each column, you'll see that the plus symbol appears. And all you need to do is click on the plus at the top of the table, and it will add a new column to the right, which will be formatted the same as the one to the left of it. So if I want to add another column at the very end of here, hover over the very end of the table, the top corner, click on there and it will add another column to the to the right of it. I actually only want four columns, so I'm just going to click on the three dots and delete that column. Another way of bringing up the tools option for the table is to right click on any cell in the table and it brings up the same menu with all the options of moving columns, rows, adding, deleting, etc. If you want to move any columns into a different position, all you'd need to do is again, right click on the cell of the column that you want to move and if you scroll down a little bit, you can see here, move column right, move column left. You can also move that row down 
and if you selected one further down there would be an option to move the row up as well so if you want to resize any of the cells so let's say for example we want this column the second column we want it all resizing if you actually click and hover between the two cells here you can see there's a blue line appears and the cursor goes to a double ended arrow and all you need to do is click and drag and that will resize that particular column Again, you can do it with any of the columns here. You can do it with the rows as well. And to resize the actual table itself, you can click and drag the drag handles in this corner here and can make it as big or as small as you want it. To quickly resize all the cells in the table, if you click on the three dots above the table, you can then choose one to size rows equally. So that puts everything at the same size. And again, if you click on the one on the left, you can now size the columns equally as well. So now all the rows and the columns are of equal size. So as you can probably tell, the, the table itself is fully customizable. All you need to do is click anywhere in the table and at the top of the page, you'll see three new options to the left of where your text formatting options usually are. So there is a colored square, which is where you change the color of the selected cells. If I go into the Monday cell here, click in the colored square, and you can see that that's what's been chosen. Now I want to change it and change it to that one. So that's, that's changed just that one particular cell. If I want to change all of these cells to the same color, click the cell you want to start with and then press shift whilst clicking the last cell that you want to change. So I want to change the cell that is day and I want it to be this whole column here. So I press shift whilst clicking Sunday and you can see that this is now selected all of this column. If I go into the, co the color square in the top left corner and change it to the color that I prefer and all of them are now changed. And the same goes with the ones across the top here. I want all of these to be the same color. So I click into the first one, press shift and click into the last one. And all, you can see all these four are now selected click in the color square and choose the color that I want. So that's the color option. The next icon next to it is one that opens the border formatting. So again, I'm gonna select my cells first and I want to select these light pink ones here. So I click on that one and then I hold shift and press the very last one in the bottom right corner. And you can see all of these pink squares are now selected. And I actually want these to be white. So I'm gonna go into the color first and I'm gonna change it to white. And now I'm going to go into the border option next to it. And you can choose the position of the border that you want around each of the selected cells. So for example, you can just have the top selected. You can choose all the borders inside and out. You can choose the color of the border line and the weight of it as well, the thickness of it. So I'm just going to choose all borders and I'm going to choose the color. I want it to match and the weight. So the weight is the thickness of the border line and you just use the slider to change the thickness. And you can see it actually, move, actually changing in the preview here as well as I'm doing it. So I think that should be okay. Click off there and you can see this is the new table. So if we click back into the table and go to the final icon in the menu across the top, and that's table spacing. So if you click into there, you can then use the slider to increase or decrease the space between all the cells. So this table spacing as I decrease it, you'll see all the cells gradually get closer and closer together until there's no gap between them at all. And then you can have it further apart as well. So I'm just gonna keep it as that. So you can see the text doesn't really look very good here. So I'm gonna select that first cell. I'm gonna hold my shift key down and go to the very bottom where it says Sunday. So all of these cells are now selected and any text that you put in you can see there's a text formatting options across the top, the same as it normally is. And it works the same. You've got your font, you can choose your different fonts, your size, the color, bold, etc. So I'm gonna change the color to white and I'm gonna put it in bold. So that looks a bit better now, it's in white. So I've just quickly carried on working on this weekly social media planner. As you can see, I've added a few more extra bits into it. So all I did was add in the title. So to quickly add in text, you just press T, type in your text, and then you can just reposition it wherever you want. And then you can see across the top of this row here, I've added in some icons for social media rather than writing the actual words. So all I did to do that was click into elements on the left-hand side. And I went into my search bar and typed in what I was looking for, which was a Facebook icon. 
clicked into there. And then I just chose one that I liked. When you hover over them, you can see if they're free by clicking on the, free, the three dots, free and three. Um, click on the three dots and it will say whether or not they're free to use. And obviously I just selected the ones that are free because I'm using a free account as well. And then I just clicked on the one I wanted to use and then just redragged it using the drag handles in the corners here. I just literally clicked and dragged it until it was a height that I wanted it to be at and then just repositioned it into the correct column header and then changed the color by clicking on the, the color square in the top here and just changed it to white. So it's pretty easy to do, pretty straightforward to do. And then I just did the same with the rest. I searched for Instagram icon, Twitter icon and YouTube icon and then did the same thing. And then at the bottom, I've just added a box for notes again. So once you're happy with the table, you can then download it. To do that, click on share in the top right corner. And then you have all these different options here for sharing it with people. And you click download down here and then just choose the file type that you want. So click on here. I don't actually need to print this out. So I'm going to choose PDF standard. If I was printing it out, then I'd choose PDF print. Or obviously you could save it as a, an image if you wanted to use it just as an image for marketing or advertising purposes. Um, but I want to save it as an actual PDF and then just click download. So as you can see, Canva has made the creation of tables really user friendly and free to use at the time of recording this. Let me know in the comments if you've had a go with the tables feature and what you've created or what you're going to create. I'd love to know. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.